Hey, Pastor Joe here. It's time for our Tuesday e-blast. Just a few things with him. Let me, let me tell you about Sunday first. It was really an incredible day. Uh, again, uh, you may get tired of hearing this, but each Sunday gets better and better. Uh, this last Sunday, we continue to see new faces, uh, more visitors at both campuses. We also saw a return of more people to the fellowship who've been out for a while. Uh, some sick, some facing issues with COVID. Uh, others just had not been for whatever reason. So just uh, it's, it's exciting to see. We continue to baptize people. Uh, kids are away at camp this week. Continue to pray for them. They should be back, coming back in, I believe, tomorrow morning. So just a lot going on and good things that are happening in the fellowship. But uh, again, just watching this process of people returning, we also have to think about the context, not only to return, but to, to rebuild. Uh, if we are still in those lower factors of our of our attendance and rebuilding the fellowship, there'll always be some folks that, that once out are just out. Uh, so it's com it's a matter of continuing to reach new people. Uh, we had, again, at both campuses, we're having visitors. It's good to see them. I want to encourage each of one of you that are members, don't be shy. You see these new faces around, uh, reach out to them. I mean, this the Believer's Fellowship has always been the friendliest church in the community. So uh, let's continue with that, that same heart and that same mindset to bring people into the fellowship. Invite them to this Bible studies. Invite them to your, take them out to lunch if there's new folks here. You feel free. It's not just the pastor's responsibility to make people feel welcome. We always have that opportunity at the end of the service, but you, you be that person who, who's the ambassador, not only for the king and the kingdom, but for your church, your fellowship as well. Uh, so we're, we need to continue to do that. we got some folks going out again for uh, uh, Pray and Go this week. Uh, used to, uh, uh, excuse me. Our youth will be going out this Wednesday night. Uh, They'll be going together in, in some areas that we've set in the spring campus. And also we have a group going out on Saturday again to, to pray and go. Again, for the Magnolia campus, it's something we'll be introducing in the fall at our campus there. So it's really exciting to see what the Lord's doing through that. We've been seeing people come to church as a result of pray and go as well. Where we go into the community, we just pray for homes in our community. I let them know that they have, there's a church in the neighborhood that, that prays for them. It's concerned about them. Leaves a just a door hanger on the door. Let them know we pray for their house and we go to the next house and do it. So be praying for that as well. But it's important as we rebuild to be a part of these outreaches, as we rebuild to be in service and, and participating in the fellowship with other believers, uh, but also as we rebuild to uh, to bring some people, not just be here, but make a, make a pointed effort. There, I mean, there's people all around you today that need a church home, that need the fellowship, need the love, need the community, and nothing provides it better than a, than a spirit-filled church with the people that love God, love people, and want to reach this world for Him. So be one of those unique ambassadors for Christ this week. Look around, you see the people in need, reach out to them, love them with your whole heart, and love them as Jesus loves them. So we're, we're in the context that you be here, you bring somebody, but also, man, we're about $100,000 shortfall. You know, when we talk about being 10, 15, 20% down in our budget, people think in dollars, but you need to think in tens of thousands of dollars. Uh, you know, people say, well, the church has a couple hundred thousand dollars in savings and we're debt free. You need to remember that's just an emergency fund. That's just enough to cover us from at best a quarter of, of downtime, you know, three months at best. Now, I don't think we have that much to really cover that. You have to realize that the church is about uh, in, uh, around three quarter million dollars to support both campuses of what we're doing in ministry. So a couple hundred thousand dollars is not much. All right. So uh, give, catch up on your giving if you've been behind. Uh, be faithful to give. Don't be constrictive in your giving. Be a gracious giver. Uh, be a be a be a be a spontaneous giver. Don't wait for somebody to wave a flag. Oh, here's a need. Here's what we got to give to. Just be that kind of person who learns how to be faithful and how to really be a steward of the things that God's put in your hands. Uh, just learn to do that weekly. Learn to do that regularly. If you've dropped off, get back in. It's so important that we don't cut back in missions. You know, last year, I, I, there's that mission in Africa uh, that we work with with, with, with uh, Pastor Dangler there, and they feed thousands of kids every year there. And we've been supporting that ministry. Uh, this year, it, it, we had a shortfall in being able to support them. And I, I've told him in recent weeks that I'm going to write them a check. And, you know, I'm believing God for our, our, our church just to be faithful to do the basics. Let's just do that. And if we'll do that, every need will be met. All right. So for you who may, you're not a giver, you know, uh, it's time to break that, that, that habit of greed and selfishness in your life and, and do what you know God wants you to do, all right? So I'm not going to scold you. I'm just going to ask you to be attentive to the Holy Spirit in your life. Don't grieve him there because that, man, that creates such a shortfall in every other area of your life. Kathy and I have learned a long time ago, if we want to keep the flow going in our own life of God's blessings on our life, then we need to be consistent givers 
and bless oars of other people in their ministries and lives. So let's all be faithful. You know I love you. Let's believe God for the greatest summer we've ever had and the greatest fall coming in. Don't forget, we have the marriage retreat coming up uh, in the uh, end of September, October. 1st of October. Don't forget also this Wednesday night, we're doing our specialized, unique midweek Bible studies for men and women. So at either campus, when you go, there's a there's a specific Bible study for women in the book of Esther, and there's a specific Bible study for men called No More Excuses. So you don't want to miss either one of those taking place at both campuses. Seven o'clock, be there. Events for children, nursery, ministries will all be open. So come be a part of what God's doing. I look forward to seeing you this coming Sunday as we continue with our ministry. So God bless you. See you then.